Well, welcome. Uh, this is the last in our series on cults. And um, I did say that I would be looking at Armstrongism this evening. Who's heard of Armstrongism? Yeah, a few of you, a few of you have. And uh, well, um, well, we'll see how we go, okay? I might have a bit of a surprise for you in a moment. So Armstrongism is named after the founder uh, of Herbert W. Armstrong. It's about his understanding and his doctrines. And his teachings are professed by him, or were professed by him, he's no longer with us, and his followers to be the restored true gospel of the Bible. And we've seen quite a lot of this, haven't we, uh, within, uh, within the cults, how they, uh, they're looking for something different, they're looking for something new, they're looking for, for different ways of doing things. Um, and Armstrong said that his doctrines were revealed to him by God. Uh, whilst he was studying the Bible. And I suppose anyone who's a Christian can actually say that. Loads of people do. God has said to me, and I'm saying to you. However, you've got to check everything out against the original word of God. And uh, actually, there's an awful lot that doesn't match. And Armstrong, uh, he started, that's why I turn it on, he started what's known as the Worldwide Church of God. Who's heard of the Worldwide Church of God? Okay, a few more of you maybe, the WCG, and that started in 1934. And actually, he was one of the very first TV evangelists. So uh, he had a vision, and he was out on the TV, uh, and therefore he had quite a wide influence, particularly in America at the time. So here's a word of warning. Don't believe everything you see on the TV, but I think you, you, you know that one. And actually, funnily enough, uh, Herbert Armstrong's teachings are very similar. They're very similar to those of the Millerites. That's the JWs we've already looked at. Um, and actually very similar to Adventism, the Seventh-day Adventists. And they're kind of all happening in America around similar times. Maybe they're sharing from one another. I don't know. But the Worldwide Church of God was taken over by a person called Joseph W. Kack, or Kack, I can't, it's very hard to pronounce his name, in 1986 when Armstrong actually died. And what Mr. Tack did was he decimated the whole movement. He uh, tried to bring the movement back to orthodox Christianity. Um, he was bringing it certainly much more back and disagreeing with the founders' doctrines. And that meant that the movement actually imploded. It is very scattered, and effectively it has ended. And I use the words that he reformed it and he trashed it. Um, so our Bible study on Armstrongism is actually over. It's finished. It's not really here anymore. So it's the shortest presentation I've done at Salt Church. Amen. You can all get egg and chips early. You can go to the pub or whatever you want to do. Um, however, as you are all still here, and as I have been asked on a number of occasions, across my ministry, actually, and, and also here at Salt Church, I've been asked about Freemasonry. So I thought I would answer the question in this series on cults. Can a Christian be a Freemason? Everyone up, for, everyone up for this little study. So this will round off our uh, studies on cults. Um, in my ministry, I've actually met uh, a lot of people, um, as you can imagine, and I've met uh, people who are Christians and who have been in Freemasonry and have left Freemasonry, okay? I've met Christians who are actually in Freemasonry, but just think it's a club like any other club, just with a few twists. I've also met Christians who have been severely harmed by the power of Freemasonry that have destroyed their bank accounts, tarnished their reputations, destroyed their marriages, they've lost their jobs, and they have been damaged mainly for standing up against Freemasonry. 
Many of you will know that within church circles, and especially within the Church of England, there has been a history of Freemasonry. And some Church of England uh, friends of mine who went into ministry up north, up north, um, they took on a church, they were asked to take on a church, and actually they didn't last very long because they were preaching the gospel of Jesus, and they were hounded out of the church, you've guessed it, by the Freemasons who were in the church. I also wonder about an incident that I was facing within prison ministry. A certain situation occurred, and I must confess it crossed my mind as to whether I had brushed up against Freemasonry and stuff had come against me. Now, Freemasonry itself does not claim to be a religion, and as such, it doesn't claim to be a Christian religion. However, its influence in the church, especially the Church of England, is long established. You will know it has an influence within the police force. You will know in government, and you will know in royal families as well. Freemasonry is one of those gentlemen's clubs that has impacted the higher echelons, particularly of society, and it is definitely a power base. So tonight, I want to say Christianity and Freemasonry are completely incompatible on numerous levels, and that a Christian should not be a Freemason, and if a Christian is in Freemasonry, then they should leave it. Freemasonry is also active in Spain. Uh, it's active in our locality, in our local region, and at times it's uh, been involved in uh, charities and in churches and in public office. So what is Freemasonry? We haven't got enough time to go into all the history of it, but apparently, oh, apparently the craft of masonry began with a guy called Euclid, E-U-C-L-I-D, in Egypt, as you may well guess. And uh, masonry came to England apparently in the reign of King Athelstan in the 900s, the early 900s AD. Elucid, uh, Euclid, sorry, was around, around, certainly around 300 BC, and um, actually he's the father of geometry, and geometry is the basis on which the superstructure of masonry is erected. Now, uh, the Matthew Cook manuscript is a cherished mason text. Uh, apparently, it traces masonry to a person you well know, a Jabal, son of Lamech, uh, in Genesis chapter 4. This is in their text the Matthew Cook Manuscript. And apparently, uh, this text tells how the knowledge came to Euclid from him to the children of Israel whilst they were in Egypt, and so on through an elaborate path to Athelstan, the king of England. <sighs> Sounds a bit like a myth to me. I don't think there's concrete evidence to this. Um, however, uh, certainly the organization, Freemasonry, was born out of medieval tradesmen's guilds that look back to the stonemasons in ancient history. Uh, so ancient Freemasons built castles and cathedrals, and you could say they were the first trade union. You could say they were the very first trade union, a group of people coming together and having great power. Um, there is an oldest known lodge in the world which is still in existence, and it's up on our screens. It is Mary's Chapel in Edinburgh, Scotland. And written records date back to the 31st of July in 1599, so quite a while ago in Scotland. So for once in our history of cults, uh, Freemasonry is not from America. Um, it's because it's older than America, but it seems that Freemasonry has come from Scotland. Do we, we have some Scottish people here. It seems like it comes from Scotland. In fact, uh, doing my research, there's an old saying, you can correct me if I get this wrong. There's an old saying that wherever Scots went in numbers, the first thing they did was to build a kirk, which means a church. Uh, and then the second thing, they would build a bank. 
Then they would build a pub. Nothing's changed. And uh, the fourth thing, they would always build a lodge. So Freemasonry was very strong, very strong in Scotland. You uh, might know that the highest ranking Freemason in the UK is His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent. Did you know that? Probably. Uh, Freemasonry uh, is an organization that is definitely there to benefit its members. You will know about a secret handshake. You know about a secret handshake. Uh, beware of anything that says secret. We've done this before. Secret or hidden comes up quite a lot in the study. Uh, the secret handshake leads to preferential treatment. Masonry is based on a brotherly bond servant to each other, uh, particularly for personal advancement. So um, some of the rituals of Freemasonry, you are making oaths, which we come on to later, but effectively you are yoking yourself as a bond servant to all Masons. Freemasonry and the Bible, well, actually there's a lot of the Bible in Freemasonry, a lot of the principles, but they collide. You will know that Freemasons are fascinated with Solomon's temple. And uh, Solomon's temple, pictures up there, was obviously an amazing feat in its time, amazing uh, in its architecture, amazing in how it was built, how it was specified. And of course, Solomon's temple would be amazing, wouldn't it? Because its architect is God Almighty. Yeah, God designed uh, the temple. And Solomon's temple and the principles surrounding the temple and its building provides a symbolic foundation for what is known as a process of self-development in Freemasonry. The whole basis of Freemasonry is to become a better person following the rituals and the principles set out within Freemasonry. Uh, Masonic tradition and rituals, very ritualistic, uh, refer to the physical architectural process of the temple's creation, but it's seen as a way to emulate the possibilities of self-growth and enlightenment. So they look at this building and how well it's been constructed and how it's come together, how well it's designed, and it is an inspiration for them to build the temple of their lives, if you like, uh, for self-advancement and for self-improvement um, based upon the principles of the temple. Uh, the structure, Solomon's temple, depicts the capabilities of men when they work collaboratively. This was the, one of the greatest buildings of its time. Um, and uh, uh, it shows that if you use the right tools and you diligently work together as a team, and the temple was built this way, uh, designed and, and orchestrated by God under Solomon, then the masons can build themselves to be better for the world. It's a bit like salvation by works, self-improvement. There's an awful lot of self-improvement books out there, how you can improve yourself. The only way to be improved is by having the Holy Spirit living in you and having a changed heart. All are sinful. Um, in Masonic ritual, Solomon, who built the temple, the son of King uh, David, is often referred to as the Grand Master. So, taking a fantastic person from the Bible who did amazing things, who had an up and down life, uh, perhaps he didn't end so well, but because he built this temple, they refer to him as the Grand Master. Uh, many Bible passages are indeed read out in Masonic rituals. I've come across um, uh, a Mason in Spain who could actually recite passages of Scripture, uh, particular Scriptures, much better than I could. He knew them word by word. And so the Bible is in here somewhere. And because the Bible um, is, is read out, in fact, when it is read out, uh, the name of Jesus is omitted 
So Jesus is taken out of uh, the Bible if anything is read which would have his name in it. And because the Bible is read, you know, yes, selectively, um, many people think, well, masonry has a Christian ethos. Surely it's okay then for a Christian to be a mason. And that has been said to me by a mason who claimed to be a Christian. I'm going to say sorry, but no. And by the end of this, you'll know at least three areas as to why the two things are definitely not compatible. When you look into masonry, even though um, they claim it's not a religion, but I'm going to show you it is a religion, um, and there is nothing of the five solars. It's actually quite the opposite. And uh, things progress in masonry as they move or progress into the organization up degrees. So there are definitely two aspects of Freemasonry. First, there is a public face. And then second, there is a private or a hidden face. So first, let's look at the uh, public face of Masonry. There's much to attract people to Freemasonry. In many ways, people think uh, that they are joining something like the Rotary Club. And I have heard that being said many a time, just like the Rotary Club. Well, the Rotary Club is open to all people, regardless of race, religion, gender, and they do an awful lot of work in the community and for charities, lots of fundraising in communities. And when it comes to should a Christian join the Rotary Club, uh, then of course, yes, if they, if they want to, certainly they can. The only issue facing a Christian in joining a club like that is how much time they spend in it and whether it clashes with their Christian calling. We only have so much time, we have a call of God on our lives, and how we use our time actually is important. And uh, Freemasonry um, used to be, it's changed, actually it's changed an awful lot, um, but the principles haven't changed, but the public face has definitely changed. Freemasonry, as we know, is male only, although there are now women's lodges and various other things happening. Um, uh, and uh, like the Rotary Club, Freemasonry does a lot of charitable work in the community, and to have a public face of being pillars in the community. That's why many are perhaps lawyers or police or clergymen, um, as well as bus drivers or, who, or businessmen, mainly local businessmen. In fact, um, the club, the Masons, uh, being a men-only club, well, perhaps it's like golf in the old days. Gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. G-O-L-F, golf. Gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. So many people just see Freemasonry as a good old men's club. What's the problem with it? It's a good place to get away from her inside. It's a place, it's a place to bond with men. It's a place where testosterone can flow freely. It's a place to do good works for the community. Surely there's nothing wrong for a Christian to be taking part in this organization. So for the rest of our time, we're going to look at the private face of masonry. And we're going to answer the question, well, should a Christian or can a Christian be a Freemason? Uh, a Christian can be, but I've already said they should not be. So my question is, should a Christian be a Mason? Here are reasons why not. I want to answer the question as simply as possible. I've just chosen three aspects. They're pretty straightforward easy to remember, I hope, three aspects of Freemasonry that are totally incompatible with Christianity. And believe me, there are hundreds more, okay? There really are hundreds more. Um, we do not have time to go into uh, the curses that come through family lines, through, through, through Freemasonry, which have come, as we will look at, come from making very serious oaths and curses against oneself. It's definitely something to be very careful of and not to have anything to do with. So let's look at the private face. So first, well, oh, that's come up. Hey, look at that, I've got that all out of order. 
There we go. I've got all of them up there. The first one is uh, Freemasonry is a religion. I'm presenting it as a religion, although they will say, and publicly they say, it is not a religion. But I will show you why, actually, behind the scenes, it is a religion. Um, it, I guess it's only higher up the degrees that you really start to realize exactly what it is. The issue of hiddenness and secrets, anything that's hidden, anything that is of a secret should ring alarm bells to Christians. And then the third issue, oaths and curses that are made in the system and in the rites of entry uh, and through the system in Freemasonry. So point one, is Freemasonry a religion? Well, here's a definition of religion. See what you think. Uh, religion is belief in a god or gods and the activities that are connected with this belief, such as praying or worshipping in a building, such as a church or a Masonic temple, well, or a temple. Uh, Freemasons say they're not a religion, but to me it certainly looks like it is a religion. For example, Freemasonry teaches the existence of a supreme being. Another word for God, a supreme being. Um, whatever that supreme being may be, it could be the God of Islam, Hinduism, or any other religion will do. Um, in fact, well, later on I give a quote about, about how they see all of the religions actually being uh, worshipping the same supreme being. To become a Freemason, so if it's not a religion, okay, why, why is this a condition? To become a Freemason, the applicant must be an adult male, traditionally, and must believe in the existence of a supreme being and in the immortality of the soul. Sounds to me like a religion. Does it sound to you like a religion? Uh, all members in that sense must believe in a deity. Um, it, within Freemasonry, within the writings of Freemasonry, as you go through the organization, Freemasons believe that different religions acknowledge exactly the same God, but they call him different names. And Freemasonry invites people of all faiths. And even if they use different names for the nameless one of a hundred names, that's a quote, that's how they see God, the nameless one of a hundred names. They are praying to the one God and Father of all. It sounds like a religion to me. The Masonic Lodge is the place of worship, and it's a bit like a, it has a whole host of temple rituals and things that go on in, within it. A bit like when we come into church, well, we sing songs. It's part of our worship of God, and we do readings, and we listen to a sermon and all these sorts of things. Decide for yourself if is Freemasonry uh, a religion. Um, there are ritual readings from the Bible and other texts. There's a guy called Manley Hall. He was a 33-degree Mason, and he wrote this. The true Mason is not creed-bound. He, realize, he realizes with the divine illumination of his lodge that as a Mason, his religion must be universal. Christ, Buddha, or Mohammed, the name means little, for he recognizes only the light and not the bearer. So it doesn't matter who said what, you recognize what these religious people, you recognize the light that they bring to society. Well, straight away as a Christian, there is only one true light. Jesus Christ is the light. He is the light of of the world. He is the only light. All other deities or names or things that I've just said to you, they are all in fact darkness and they are backed by darkness. Masons teach that man, human beings, are not sinful but in a process of self-improvement, a bit like Buddhism this would be, um, but uh, in a process of self-improvement. Um, Deputy Grand Master, another quote, R. W. Donald Gardner Hicks, Jr., great name, said, the lesson we teach is that the rough ashlar, which means a rough cut stone, this is all about masonry, 
the rough cut stone, represents ourselves rude and imperfect by nature, but that the perfect ashlar, a stone with smooth sides and square edges, is that state of perfection at which we hope to obtain by a virtuous education our own endeavors and the blessings of God. Sounds very much that uh, Freemasonry has, has religious-like uh, uh, activities, a belief system, uh, and ways of doing things in its rituals. There are rights of entry through the organization. For example, the right of entry for Christianity is full immersion baptism. It's the ceremony that says, I am a Christian, I'm proud to be a Christian. Uh, it's all done in the open, in the light, in, 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 in public. And it's a bit of a symbolism of a new creation in Christ that you've joined the family of God. That's another, another aspect, what baptism kind of means. So there are rites of entry into Freemasonry. Um, I mean, for Christians, it would be baptism. For Judaism, it would be circumcision. And for Masons, it would be a whole ritual rite going through the degrees of the organization. Here's a very interesting fact, and I've actually, uh, here in Spain, had discussions about this, um, and people have uh, mentioned this to me. Um, so it's actually quite, quite open now. And one of the things that was amazing in my research is so much that was hidden can now be found on the internet. That's one of the great advantages of the internet. It can be a myth buster. And disenfranchised people who have perhaps been Masons or hurt by Masons, been in the organization, they can split on them, and then all these things start to become known. Um, so ultimately, in Freemasonry, there is the so-called secret name of God that many seem to know because of this myth-busting internet. And it, it, the secret name for God is Jabulon, and, or Jahbulon, probably divide, derived from Jahbulon. Um, now, it used to be a great secret. Apparently, within the hiddenness in the history, you, the na secret name of God would be revealed as you travel through the, the Masonic system. Um, but now, it seems that it's actually quite open, and I've seen an awful lot of research on it. So... Um, uh, it used to be a great secret, but perhaps it isn't anymore. And um, more and more, the Freemasons organization and belief system is known more and more. And because it's easy to find out, then definitely there's loads of reasons why a person should not be a Mason, should not be a Freemason. A Christian should not be a, a Freemason. So unpacking the Freemasons name for God a little bit more, in Freemasonry, God is the great architect. Solomon's the grand master, if you like. Perhaps you could say he's the prophet. So God is the great architect of the universe. And um, the name of the great architect is revealed in the rite of the holy arch as Jabulon. And this is a composite name, as is on our uh, screen. It's a composite name, a built-together name from different gods. So it comprises the Hebrew god, Yah, J-A-H, that would be the Latin version, as opposed to Yahweh, that's the Latin, Jehovah. Yah, standing for Yahweh. The Canaanite fertility deity, Bull. We know Bull as Baal. Anywhere in the Bible, Baal crops up, it's evil and it's demonic. And uh, this bull did magic. And then uh, the on, the, end, the last two is on, which represents Osiris, the ancient Egyptian god of the underworld. Freemasonry is occult and darkness. So much is hidden. Christianity is all about being open and fully in the light. Uh, once uh, this very hidden name uh, is the name for a god, a false god. So I say, with this limited time, I say, sounds, sounds like to me that actually Freemasonry is not just a men's club, 
keep the women out. It's got a, a worship aspect to it. Whether you know it or you don't know it, uh, it would appear to be a religion to me. It certainly looks like one. And it's got religious beliefs of an almighty or a, of the great architect. It's got a name for God. And these things used to be revealed as you went through the organization. I have to say, most of the free, well, not every Freemason I've met, I have met some who really knew their stuff and uh, was very, very um, careful around such people. But a lot of the people that I have met, they're just at the ground level. They're just on the first rung. They just go in and they join in and they do this and they do that. And they've got a bit of kudos, you know, it's a bit of fun, a bit like Brud Brothers and all of this. And perhaps they don't really take it too seriously. I, I've met, again, some in Spain who don't take any of this particularly seriously. You know, it's, it's just, a, just a bunch of stuff, isn't it? You know, I don't believe it, but you're in it. You know, you're taking part in it. And actually, you've gone through certain rituals yourself, which actually are very dangerous. So many people at the low end, they seem to ignore all of this or laugh at it. But actually, I don't believe it's a laughing matter. And I guess it's only as you climb higher or really get embedded that the truth becomes known. And by then, you are deceived and you are in a cult. Um, so I, it looks like to me that um, it is a uh, religion. It looks like to me it's a religion. Uh, point two, Freemasonry is inherently or certainly has been a secret organization and very secret to its lower members because they don't know what the higher stuff is. And this definition, this the Bible would call occult, occult. Occult is to do with evil. Anything that is hidden is occult. The Bible tells us that, and the dictionary definition of occult is hidden, secret, and mysterious. This is Freemasonry, particularly pertaining to the supernatural. Yup, you're long. Uh, examples of occult practices could be and are astrology, perhaps. Well, astrology, definitely, and not astronomy, astrology. Uh, reading the stars, uh, witchcraft, wicca, the black arts, fortune telling, uh, magic, black and white, Ouija boards, tarot cards, spiritism, parapsychology, and Satanism. There's a whole raft of stuff that is extremely dangerous, and the Bible calls it occult, it calls it witchcraft, it calls it demonic, and have nothing to do with it. Because of this hiddenness uh, behind the organization, it means that those joining Freemasonry, they don't really know what's potentially coming down the track and how it works, and that is a good enough reason why a Christian should stay out of it. We are children of the light. We're not children of the darkness or secrets. Most, I think, um, or many at the low level, don't really know this. They don't see this. They see it as scaremongering. After all, I'm just a successful businessman who wants to do some good in the world and have a bit of fun with my male mates at the same time some lax attitudes, go and join the Rotary Club and, uh, and do it in a different way. Much of the hiddenness has now, in fact, been exposed. There is so many books written, there's so much on the internet, much of the hiddenness in our last 50 years or so has been exposed, much of the rituals indeed have been exposed, uh, they're seen on the internet, um, however, masonry has used the fact that it's all out there actually to, to their advantage. Great marketing strategy. Um, most lodges have, have amazing websites, very professionally done, and they go through an awful lot of this stuff. Well, not the hidden stuff I've told you, but they go through an awful lot uh, of myth-busting about masonry, uh, again, trying to have a very nice public face but you cannot get away from the hidden stuff that I'm telling you uh, this evening. Um, and so uh, masonry has become much more open. It's using it to its own advantage. Um, their aim is to normalize 
Uh, I think every cult's aim is to normalize itself and to say it's just like anything else. It's absolutely fine. There's, there's, there's no problem here. No, one, no need to look here. Everything's uh, absolutely fine. You do know about the secret handshake to identify each other and then uh, being obligated being obligated to show favoritism and support to one's fellow Freemason. This is a very serious bond servant issue, a joining together, a spiritual joining together through making oaths um, that we come on to in a minute. You might know that there are 33 degrees in Freemasonry. Did you know that? I guess you did. The 33 degrees part of the Scottish rite of Freemasonry. That's 33 different levels of inclusion, a bit like climbing up a ladder and education. Most are on the low level. But outside of Scotland, there are three degrees of masonry. So there's different systems within masonry. I didn't have time and I didn't think it was necessary to go through all of the structures with you. Um, but, um, it, it, oh yeah, I've, I've got here, um, outside of Scotland, there are three degrees. That's not the girl band only to try to give a little bit of, bit of jocular fun here. Uh, Freemasonry is a worldwide organization. It certainly has been hidden. It certainly has been secret. It has been mysterious, although it's becoming a little bit less of that. Uh, again, even more reason for a Christian not to take part in it because the information is there to see what's going on. So um, immediately, our... Alarm bells as Christians should be ringing very loudly. You know, being a false religion, a false deity, and the belief system, and now we've got the hiddenness and the secretness of the organization. This is not compatible with Christianity. A Christian should not be in it. Um, we are learning that Freemasonry is a religious cult, and Freemasonry, the Bible would call occult. Uh, it is darkness. And uh, we know from a Christian perspective, our struggle's not against flesh and blood. But, you know, we are, and in fact, we're not fighting individual Masons, but we're fighting what's behind the Masonry. And actually, we're fighting the curses that people have put on them that actually have a real spiritual power and a hold over people, even down family lines. We haven't got time to go into how to deal with that tonight. Um, but it's a real phenomenon. So our struggles not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. What is behind all of this is to gain massive influence in the world for yourself and for your buddies, um, which ideally is not the Christian way, is it? Christian way is to lay down one's life uh, for one's buddies. Um, Luke gives a, a very big warning about anything that's hidden, which is not Christian. It cannot be Christian if it's hidden. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. So Jesus is God of light. He's the one who exposes. He shines the light in the darkness. And all of the darkness will be uh, expelled. It will be opened up and it will be judged by the Lord. The third point on, uh, the third point on Freemasonry is oaths and rituals into entry. Um, I don't know if you've done a, I mean, it's a good Bible study on its own right. I didn't have time to do it tonight, but the Bible says don't make oaths. Um, you know, don't and let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's good enough. Do not swear by anything, you know, in heaven, because comes you haven't made heaven, and don't swear by earth or under the earth. So, you know, you, you can't, you're actually locking yourself into something which becomes dangerous. So oaths and rituals into entry. Uh, one of the fundamental oaths of Freemasonry is to support a fellow Freemason and never split on a fellow Freemason. And that's the, in fact, some of the oaths that are, that are made is on pain of death. Uh, I knew someone 
who had gone through as a local businessman before he became a Christian, and he went through some of the rituals and oaths, which are incredibly grisly, actually acting out what will happen to you if you do split on someone, if you do break the code. And that is where the oaths and the actions that you make produces a curse upon your life. Um, one of the uh, things about the all-seeing eye, the great eye, and that, in fact, studies I've come across, or I'm aware of some studies, that a lot of uh, Masons have troubles with their eyes. They actually do have trouble with their eyes. I know a Mason who was a farmer uh, who actually ended up losing one of his eyes. He just got a little scratch, the whole thing went septic, and he lost his eye. I hope you can read that. I just tried to fit it all in, but I'll read it to you. Oaths, Christians, uh, 2 Corinthians 6.14 says this, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? It's a hard fact of life as to what the Bible is saying. There are children of the light and there are children of the darkness. The born-again believer, born from above with the Spirit of God in them, is the children of light. Everything else is darkness. Unpalatable, uh, but biblically true. And so the Bible says, do not make this commitment, do not make this oath, do not make this bonding together with unbelievers. It's, uh, it's going to cause a lot of trouble, particularly um, with the issues of, well, I, if I go against you, then I, I will lose my life. I mean, that's it's just not good. When a Christian takes the oath or the oaths of Freemasonry, there's more than one as you go through it, he is yoking himself spiritually to the members and to the worldwide membership of Freemasonry. And he is swearing to the following doctrines that God has pronounced as being false doctrines. The whole thing about enlightenment, you remember I said, it's, is it a religion or not? Freemasonry is about trying to improve oneself, following certain rules. It's kind of a salvation by grace. It's, a, it's trying to improve yourself to reach illumination by good works. That is a false doctrine. Jesus, to a Mason, is just one of many equally wise prophets. So they've reduced Jesus, as the cults do. Uh, a Mason uh, approaches the lodge in spiritual darkness and ignorance. The Bible says Christians are children of the light. And the great or the grand architect of the universe, Jabulon, is representative of all gods in all religions. But there is only one true God, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, the Lord. So this organization is very anti-Christian, although it says it's absolutely fine. Come and join us. There's no harm here. Making oaths like this or saying a curse might seem like harmless fun, like when we were children, we're at play, but it's not. Making oaths like this to darkness and speaking curses over oneself can manifest in great problems even from generation to generation. There is a power behind it. We don't have time to go into the effects of such curses, but I can tell you that um, there are specific, specific Christian uh, healing courses that Christians can go on to get free from the curses of Freemasonry, even if a person hasn't been in Freemasonry. It might be a father or a grandfather. And I actually have some good friends who went through such a course, and you go in with your eyes open, you think there's something, but it's when things manifest, when there is like a deliverance that takes place, you really realize the power of this, this occult dark uh, organization. It has a public face, has a dark private 
face. So I know people have been on such a course, and believe me, stuff has happened. And actually, coming out of it, they feel a darn sight freer. They don't know what's lifted, but things are different. Their attitude is better. All sorts of things happen by being set free from the effects of Freemasonry. So, to our last page. Can a Christian be a Freemason? Well, actually, yes, they can, but they shouldn't be. And as soon as they realize something's wrong, they should get out of it, and they should seek some support and some help to get through it and out of it, and to make sure it has no hold over their life. But to conclude, many people think Freemasonry is just a men's only club. It's a bit of fun with a bit of play acting. No harm in that. They think they, that they do good works in the community, that they're pillars of society in the church, the police, government, and in business. But when you get on the bad side of this and it, it, it huddles together and destroys you, that isn't a good work, is it? And again, remind it, I remind you that I know some people who have come on the bad side of the higher up Freemason grip um, in society. <coughs> so a Christian should not be a Freemason. I hope you can see why. It seems to me it actually really is a religion. Even if they say it isn't, it seems that it is. Um, uh, or it's a religion all the same. Masonry contradicts the clear teaching of Scripture on numerous issues. And as such, uh, we should stay away from anything that's hidden, anything that's secret, and it should have an alarm bell. It reduces, uh, Freemason reduces the one true God to all gods being equal. That, again, is an alarm bell. It reduces Jesus Christ, even by not mentioning his name, uh, if, if it crops up in the Scripture. Freemasonry has a form of worship, has rights of entry, has a belief system, and it's totally incompatible with Christianity. I think I've made the point, you don't make oaths or curses to be tied to anyone. We shouldn't do it in any life, really. Well, we shouldn't. Do not be a bondservant to Freemasonry. So a Christian should not be a member of any organization that looks like this or has connection with Freemasonry. And uh, I... I hope in the time that we've had, you've got some good reasons why I believe a Christian should not be a Mason, and if one is, should actually come out of it. Amen. And th thank you. And this concludes uh, our uh, mini-series on, um, on the cults, and I'm looking forward to doing something completely different, uh, back into scripture, back into biblical things. But a lot of people had asked me uh, over a number of years about these types of issues, the different types of cults, and I have been asked um, quite a lot about the Freemasonry. I wasn't going to do it, but I drummed up the courage to do it, and so let's just close in a prayer. So, Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you that Jesus is the light. Father, we thank you that there is one God uh, higher than any other God, a Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We know all of this, but we rejoice in it. We also rejoice that we are children of the light, that we are in your kingdom, that in Christ Jesus we are, we are safe. And Father, I want to just pray the protection uh, over us this evening, protection over myself, Lord, because of a subject that's been uh, kind of opened up. But Lord, it has spiritual connotations, definitely. But you are the powerhouse. And uh, Father, we trust in you. And uh, I just pray for safety for all of us here uh, as we leave here this evening, go on to other things. Uh, and Lord, we just want to glorify your holy name. Jesus, your name is higher than any other name. And at the name of Jesus, every single knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. Amen. Amen.